Television Network. Junior, uh, just to test you out, how much is seven times five? Thirty-four. That's what I make it. <laughs> You're wrong. Seven times five is thirty-five. That's what I get for sending you to the most expensive school in the city. I go to public school. It costs a hundred grand to build. That's expensive, ain't it? Big deal. I was a buck short. <laughs> That's the trouble around here. A buck here, a buck there. Where does the money go to? We spend it. We spend it? You spend it? Well, I like that. I haven't spent a cent on myself in a year. No dresses, no shoes. I'm wearing last year's hat and my coat's falling apart. And I need a new girdle. So do I. You need it more than Mom. <laughs> I mean, I need a new overcoat. Even the moths are walking out on it. Why don't you ask for a raise? If you just get it through your head, dear, that you can't spend more money than you make, these monthly arguments wouldn't be necessary. That's right. Blame me for everything. Get me all mixed up. You've been mixed up since I first met you, dear. Then why did you marry me? Because I loved you. That's no excuse. <laughs> you were the one who said two can live as cheap as one. There are four of us now. That's right. Blame me for everything. <laughs> I could go live with Corrine Baker. I could quit school and get a job. You two are staying right here. You're the only things we own outright. <laughs> Daddy, may I ask you a question? Don't bother me now, Babs. I'm reading the stock markets. What's little Abner doing? What well, coffee, dear? Yeah, fill her up, baby. Hey, Pop, will you help me buy a football today? You ain't getting no money for footballs. Not with amalgamated tin plates down three-eighths. We don't own any amalgamated tin plates. We got a dozen of them in the kitchen. I got the money to buy the football, Pop. You have? Where'd you get it? He had it in his piggy bank. I shook his piggy bank yesterday. It was empty. I got two of them. You got two bags? Sure. I keep the one with the money in it under my mattress. The other one's for you to shake. <laughs> How do you like that? We can't make ends meet. This kid's got a chain of banks. After hearing you complain until I finally dropped off to sleep last night, I hit on a practical solution. Yeah, what? Well, I'd like to fix up the attic room and rent it. No, no, that's out. No strangers are living in my house. But it's a perfectly good room, and it seems silly to let it go to waste. It ain't going to waste. I'm saving that room for when I bring my dear old parents out from Brooklyn to visit us. Riley, you've been saying that for the last ten years. And I'll go on saying it for the next ten. That's the kind of a sort of a dutiful son I am. And now, for our unseen audience, we come to the drawing of the surprise party of this week whose parents will be flown from any part of the United States for a surprise visit with their children. A dozen names in the Blue View trailer section of the telephone book were checked and rechecked for location and illegibility. Mrs. J. Randolph Wiggins, the president of the Blue View Civic Society, will draw this week's lucky name. Mrs. Wiggins, please. As is customary to keep this a complete surprise for the winner, the name will not be divulged until next week's program, when the fortunate recipient will be here in person to tell you of his happy reunion. And remember, Soto's Doggy Deodorizer makes your pooch socially safe. <laughs> What's happened to the water pressure? Oh, Daddy's washing the car again. Oh, for heaven's sake. <laughs> Answer the door, Junior. Okay, Mom. Is this the residence of Chester A. Riley? Yeah. Is Mrs. Riley at home? Yeah. Is Mr. Riley at... He's in the backyard. Good. Then I'll come in. Would you call your mother? Sure. Hey, Mom! What is it, 
it there. Some guy demonstrating cough drops. You are uh, Mrs. Riley, I presume? Yes. Well, I'm Guy Mannering of the Surprise Party Program. Golly, I thought... Shh. That's the program that brings parents and children together in a surprise party. I think he's casing the joint. Quiet, Junior. Uh, what was it you wanted? Well, your husband's name was picked from the bowl yesterday on the surprise party program. And we want your cooperation. That means you're bringing Grandma and Grandpa out here to visit Daddy. You see, I personally fly to New York and fly them back for a reunion with their son. And all expenses are paid by Soto's Doggy Deodorizer. Well, that's wonderful. Well, we think so. You see, in checking, we have discovered that Monday night is your husband's parents' golden wedding anniversary, and we're planning it for that evening. Oh, my husband will be tickled pink when I tell him. No, Mother, you mustn't. It's a surprise. Exactly. You see, we can seal microphones all around the room and broadcast the happy reunion. How much do we get paid for? Well, there will be, uh, there will be orchids for the ladies and boutonnieres for the gentlemen. Solomon Salamis give scooters. That's a children's program. <laughs> Remember, your husband must know nothing about this. I'll be in touch with you Monday. Until then, good morning. Uh, good morning. Get some friction tape by the medicine cabinet. Oh, Riley, you tracked up my clean kitchen. Oh, you're dripping on the carpet. Yeah, you're all wet. What's everybody whispering about? <laughs> Who was that man that just left? Why, uh, <clears throat> uh, that was a man. Uh, yes, I know it was a man. I seen him from the driveway. Uh, he was taking a census. Oh, don't try to fool me. I got a head on my shoulders. He was here about renting that room. Am I right, Peg? Why, yes, dear. I can see there's no use in trying to hide anything from you. You didn't do it, did you? Oh, of course not. Well, I wouldn't make a move without your permission. And I ain't given it. Uh, may I go back to the kitchen now, dear? <laughs> yes, you got my permission for that. Oh, thank you very much, Your Honor. Let this be a lesson to you kids on how a wife should be handled. Oh, brother. <laughs> Say that again. I wonder who could be bothering us now. You know when you open the door. If it's a salesman, I slam the door right in his kitchen. Oh, don't be a grouch, dear. We don't want any. <laughs> but I'm I'm not selling anything. May I come in? What for? I I want to talk with you. Well, I'll give it two minutes. <laughs> My name is Guy Mannering. Well, don't blame me for that. You, uh, you are Michael Riley? My dear. You have a son? No. 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 Well, we, uh, we understood that you had a son named Chester. No, him. Did I hear the gentleman mention Chester? Keep out of this matter till you know what's coming. You are Mrs. Riley, I presume. Uh, yes. Uh, what about Chester? Well, is he your son or isn't he? Don't admit nothing until you know it is done. Of course he's our son. Oh, nothing's happened to him. Oh, no. In fact, I'm a courier of good tidings. I'm from the surprise party program. What's he yakking about? Shh, Father. <laughs> uh, what's that to do with Chester? How would you like to fly to California to see your son? I know it. He's a nigger, a plain salesman. I'm sorry, Mr. Uh... Guy Mannering. Uh, father just pretends he's mad because she has to move so far away. I should have settled down here in Canarsie. Then you would like to see your son. Oh, we just love to. We've never even seen our grandchildren. If they look like Chester, we ain't miss much. Then, like Aladdin, I rub the magic lamp. Surprise party is flying you to California. All expenses paid to reunite you with your loved ones on your golden wedding anniversary. Oh, I can't believe it. It isn't true. Do you hear that, Father? They're taking us to California to see Chester. What do you say to that? 
What a lousy trick to play in an old man because he's been married for 50 years. Give me a bite of that sandwich, Ryle. I ain't had no breakfast neither. Why do you suppose Peg wanted to get me off to work early? There's no figure in whites. All I said to Honey Bee was drop dead and she run me right out of the house. <laughs> and her aim's getting better every day. The kids acted kind of funny, too. Well, maybe Peg's got someone coming to rent that spare room. Not a chance. I forbaded her. I'm saving that room for when my dear old parents come out to live off of me. Oh, well, when's that gonna be? I'll bet you ain't kicked in with a buck in five years. Is that so? I sent them to regular. Are you kidding? If it wasn't for your old man's social security, he'd be pushing a push car to Flatbush Avenue. That's a lie. I love my dear old parents. They're like a mother and father to me. <laughs> when was the last time you wrote to them? I sent them a postcard regular twice a year on their anniversary. I bet you don't even know when their anniversary is. Is that so? They'll be married 50 years next week. Next week? That's right. That gives me plenty of time to pick out a fresh postcard. You dope. Their anniversary is this week. Huh? I remember when you wrote them last year. But that can't be. How could I forget my dear old mother and father? With your brains, it's easy. I got a wire. I got to phone them. Here comes the bus. You can do that later. I'll go home on my lunch hour and call them on my telephone. Big deal. On their golden wedding, they're going to get a long-distance call. Collect. <laughs> How are they going to pay for it? <laughs> I, I just can't realize this little bat. She's a grown young lady. <laughs> I'm getting on, Grandma. Oh. I wish a trip, Mother. Well, outside of Father, insisting we were going to crash every minute, it was just fine. Oh. Pardon me, madam, just placing a mic. I don't care what they call it, it's still an attic. Oh, Father. Oh, I'm sure you'll be quite comfortable there, Dad. Who's this? Get another mic and put it on the mantel back of the clock. Fine time to bring us when they're redoing the parlor. <laughs> they're hiding the mics for the broadcast. It's a surprise for Daddy. Won't the big fat head catch on? <laughs> you two will have to stay in your room until we signal you to come out. I come 3,000 miles to hide in an attic with the mice. <laughs> hey, Mom, Pop's coming up the street. Maybe he's heard. Maybe he's sick. Maybe he's Chan. All right, string along with Junior. He's trying to get out of the house. He'd spoil everything. We're not ready yet. Oh, Bab, show your grandma and grandpa to your room. Oh, this way, Grandma. Oh, it's all so exciting. Come along, Father. Maybe it would have been better if the plan had it crashed. Oh, Mr. matter, and you get behind the sofa. Junior, take that man and hide him in the hall closet. Okay, mister, this way. <laughs> Hey, what are you doing on my roof? Electric Light Company. Defective wire. Oh, I got some defective bulbs, too. Don't forget to change them. <laughs> Riley, what on earth are you doing home at this time? I gave up my lunch hour. I got to make a phone call. Well, couldn't you phone at the plant? I ain't got that many nickels. Oh, Riley. Would you mind explaining what this is all about? Uh, Peg, this is very important. I've got to make this call before it's too late. Oh, get me long distance and snap it up. Who are you calling long distance? My two best friends and admirers. Hello. Uh, get me shot Myers Delicatessen on Flatbush Avenue right next to McArdle's Bar and Grill. <laughs> what? Well, it's in Brooklyn, USA. Oh, what are you calling there for? Peg, don't you know what day today is? It's my dear old parents' golden wedding anniversary. Oh, but Riley! I want to get him down to the phone, congratulate him, and invite him out here to live with us. You don't think they'd do it, do you, Peg? Riley, put down that phone. Hello? Hello, Schottmeyer's delicatessen? Uh, is that you, Adolph? Yeah, who's calling? Uh, well, this is Chester A. Riley. I'm calling you from California. I'm sorry if you don't deliver. 
No, no, wait a minute, Adolf. No, don't hang up. Uh, you know my folks, the Rileys. They live three houses away, third floor rear. Not no more. They left yesterday carrying a bag. Well, where'd they go? How would I know? They didn't buy no sandwiches. I got to hang up now for a change. I got a customer. Goodbye. No, wait a minute. Don't, don't. They, they're gone. My dear old parents, I'll, I'll never see them again. Oh, wait a minute, Riley. Don't jump to conclusions. They, well, they've probably gone on a vacation or, or a visit. No. Nobody asked my old man to visit. <laughs> no, they've been evicted. Kicked out. Wandering the cold streets, homeless. My poor old mother with a rheumatism. And dear old dad with his athletic big toe. <laughs> Riley, calm down. I can't calm down. I want my mama. I want my papa. For heaven's sakes, Riley, you'll see them. Uh, they'll get in touch with us. Wait a minute. Uncle Joe. That's where they went. He's the only one who can stand, Pop. He's weak-minded. Uh, where'd I hide that phone book? I know. Back of the sofa. Good afternoon. Oh, excuse me. You're using the phone book? Who is this sofa mouse, and why have you got him hidden back on my couch? He's not hidden. He's, he's looking it over. Uh, I'm having it recovered. Yes, yes. Now, I, uh, I would suggest a delicate chintz with a flower design of, uh, of Closetasia. <laughs> That's where I hid the phone book in the hall, Closetasia. <laughs> Don't tell me this one's upholstering the closet. He's the exterminator man. Exter... What's that K, Geb? What's that mean? Uh, K-G-E-B. Uh, Kelly gets every bug. <laughs> My poor decrepit parents living on crumbs. And your renting rooms, stuffing sofas, killing bugs. I'm leaving. Oh, Riley, where are you going? To the airport. I'm catching the first plane for Brooklyn. Just remember this. I've always been a good husband, a respectful father, and a dutiful son. Riley, wait a minute. I'm sorry, sir, but this is our cheapest rate to New York. Well, couldn't I work my way? This is an airplane, not a freight steamer. <laughs> Look, Riley, you're not a bad sort. You do some work occasionally. Uh, and I imagine you're a fair husband, uh, a passing father. Uh, you do have some intelligence. I mean, uh, you're almost normal. Uh, so I'm going to try to explain this to you once more. We do not advance $240 on wages. Thank you very much. Goodbye. <laughs> Daddy's already left the plant, Mr. Mannering. He'll be here in a minute. Excellent. The program is on the air. It'll be our cue to appear in about five minutes. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Watch your big feet. He didn't mean it, Dad. You two will hide behind the screen until you're cue to appear. I know we was in trouble the minute that blood brain knocked at our door. <laughs> I'll broadcast from the kitchen. When that lights, it'll be Mr. Riley's cue to speak. We'll have a real reunion dinner after the broadcast. Do you think the big lug is worth it? Chester's the only son we have, dear. That's the one break I got in life. <laughs> well, Riley, you tried everybody, so forget it. You can't file the dough. Now, he tried the bank. They want you to put up something. You think they'd take Junior? <laughs> I got it. I know where they are. Where? The poorhouse. No, Gillis, no. Five will get you ten. My poor old mom and pop all alone in the poorhouse, scrubbing floors on their withered old knees. Ah, oh, they got them new sponge marks now. Oh. I know what I'll do. 
I'll call at the poorhouse. I'll speak to them personally. What did they say? Congratulations on your 50th wedding anniversary. <laughs> he's coming, Mom. Oh, he's coming, Mr. Madeline. Oh, I'm so flustered. Get behind the screen, Mother. Oh, hurry, oh. Grandma. Up, up, Mr. Riley. Stop your shoving. Stop your shoving. Behind the screen. Hi. Hi. That's all I've done since I've been in California. I feel like a hundred criminals. <laughs> now, watch the light. Welcome home, Daddy. Come on, dear. Don't bother me now. I've got a phone. Hi. Give me a long distance. What's this about, Riley? I know where my folks are. Oh, Daddy. I knew we'd gum it up. How'd you find out? Gillis thought of it. Hello, long distance. Get me the Kings County Poorhouse in Brooklyn. <laughs> Mr. and Mrs. Riley, person to person. Father, he thinks we're in the poorhouse. I wish we was. It's nice and quiet there. <laughs> well, they've got to be there. Page to cocktail lounge. The <laughs> poorhouse. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Guy Mannering speaking to you from the home of Chester A. Riley, where in just a moment you will be the party to the joyous reunion of the happy... Mr. Mannering, you won't leave the phone. Bring me all couple out. This is the golden wedding anniversary of Mr. Riley's parents, from whom he has been separated for 20 years. You can come out now and face him. I can hear him. Do I have to look at him? <laughs> While he thinks that they're in Brooklyn, in reality, they are just a few feet away. Can you imagine the joy in their hearts? Mom? No! Mom, the signal. It's time for Daddy. No. Don't give me that. Try the front porch. Me. <clears throat> yes. Riley, I rented the room to an old couple. Uh, turn around. I want you to meet them. And now, the first touching words of a loving son. Reunited with the parents he adores. But, Roddy, I want you to meet them. I don't want to meet them. Get them thumbs out of here. I'll give them five minutes to pack up and get out. That figures. Now, you better find my mama and papa to write them under your nose. It's really true. My own papa and my own mama. How did you get here? On our broomsticks. <laughs> when Peg said the new borders and I turned around and saw you, I didn't know what to do. You sure lost up the network. <laughs> now, this is for the Blue View News, so let's all have a happy smile. All right, everybody. Dinner's ready. Come on, Pop, let's eat. <laughs> What a revolting development he is.